Hey everyone, in this video let's talk about a very unique scenario that I just came across in the LinkedIn Power BI group and what Tarun has done is he has posted a question with his data set and in simple terms what he wants to do is simply if, I, if he selects a given month of the current year he wants to get the sales amount or any measure for the future 3 months so let's say he selects June 2021 he wants to get the sales amount for July, August and September but that amount should be from the previous year. So in 2021, he wants to report the sales amount of the previous year. Now this is a calculation that can only be done with some complex logics and it is not a very traditional calculation. So I'm going to show you how you can solve this specific scenario. So let's go to the Power BI file and I have already prepared the solution. So on my right hand side, I have a slicer and on the left side, I have a matrix in which I have a total sales amount and the calculation that Tarun is exactly looking for even though the data model is actually a different one. So right now on the slicer I have March 2008 and as you can see that I am getting the sales amount in 2008 for April, May and June from the previous year. So you can see that in April 2008 I get the amount of April 2007, in May 2008 I get the amount of May 2007 and so on and so forth. So Let's see how I have actually created that calculation and I will show you that from exact scratch so that you can also write the code yourself. So let's get started. So the first thing that I need to set up in this model is that I need to duplicate the dates table. So let me just go and show you that I have a date table in my model which is a basic date table with some columns for different fields and what I have done is I have created a duplicate date table of that dates table by using the simple re reference to that dates table. And if I go to the diagram view, you can see that one of my date table is actually connected to my fact table, but the other one, which is the duplicated date table is not connected to the sales table. And by using this logic, we will be able to produce a solution. And I will explain to you why we actually need the disconnected date table in the first place. So let's go to the report view. And if I shift the matrix to the left and let's rearrange things a little bit so i'm going to drag this slicer to the left and i'm going to create a copy of it so let place sit here and in this slicer i'm going to bring the column from my dates table which is the original date table so i'm going to use the calendar year month number and let's say if i select a month in this let's say i select april 2008 you can see that my matrix is getting filtered and the only month that is visible is for April 2008. And the problem with using the column from the dates table is that in case if I place a slicer on the, if I place a selection on the slicer, the matrix will be filtered. And before even I make my DAX calculation, I will only be limited with a very few months or a few years. And I do not want that. I want that the filtering should come from the DAX code, but not from the slicer. And this is one of the reason why I have actually used a disconnected date table. So let's remove this one, which is using the column from my original date table. So let's remove that. And let's see if this calculation is working for any other selection. So yes. And now let's start by creating a measure. So I'm going to right click, create a new measure. And let's name it as previous year N2. So the first thing that we need to do is create a variable and that would be selected month here and that would be simply calculate over the max disconnected date calendar year month number and then I'm going to use the all selected function so that I can only get the filter context for the dates that are actually selected in the slicer. So let's write disconnected dates. And if I close that and try to return that variable just to check that what is actually getting stored in that. So I'm going to write selected month here. And I'm going to bring that measure into the matrix. So as you can see that upon selecting April 2008, I am getting 2008.04. If I select July, July 2008, I get 2008.07. So the, that part of the code is actually working. And let's go back to the code so that we can write more code. 
and now what we can do is simply identify the next three months based on the code that we have already written so let's see how we can do that so i'm going to create another variable and that will be next three months and that will be a calculate table over the top end function so i'm going to use the top end function to determine the next three months based on the sort order so i'm going to write three and values disconnected dates calendar year month number and the sorting will also be based on the calendar year month number so let's write that again disconnected dates calendar year month number and that will be sorted in an ascending order so let's close that and let's try to see what we are actually getting with that so if i return concatenate x next three months and the expression will be disconnected date calendar year month number and that would be concatenated by a comma and a space so let's close that right now we get only one month the reason being that we are not actually removing the the disconnected date table from the filter context so what i can do is simply here write remove filters disconnected date and now let's see what we get so we are getting more than more months than i actually expect as you can see 2503 205102 02. so let's see what is actually happening so the reason why we are actually getting the months in the 2005 is that in this table i have the data starting from 2005 till 2011 and since i am actually removing the filter from the disconnected date table as a whole the top end is actually returning the three months from the beginning but what i want to do is simply return the three months that occur after the selected month here and for that what we can do is here we can write disconnected date calendar year month number should be greater than the selected month and year variable and let's write a comma let's press enter and now you can see that on selecting july 2008 i get august 2008 september 2008 as well as october 2008 so let's go back to the code so that we can write a more code and before moving ahead i'm just going to format this code otherwise i won't be able to sleep tonight <laughs> so let's format everything this looks good okay perfect and now what i'm going to do is simply apply the months that i've received in this variable on the dates table so let me just show you what i mean so if i go to the diagram view so right now in the variable i have actually filtered this date table or or i can say that i have received the values after filtering the disconnected date table and as you can see that there is no relationship between these two table so somehow i need to use those values from that variable and apply a filter over the dates table so that we can retrieve the sales amount and let's see how we can do that so first of all i am going to create a variable and i am going to name it as create data lineage so that will be basically a calculate table over the values dates calendar year number and then i'm going to use the tree task function so let's write tree task the next three months variable as if they were actually a uh, part of the original date column so let's write dates calendar year month number and then i'm also going to remove the filter from the dates table so that my matrix is actually not able to cross filter the the variable so let's write remove filters from the dates table and let's see what we are actually getting in that variable so i'm going to copy and paste it inside the concatenate x function and here okay i actually need to make it calendar year month number and let's see let's remove that and write dates dates okay so let's confirm that and now you can see that we are actually getting the same values that we have already seen earlier so we are getting august september and october and but these values are actually from the dates table which has a relationship with the sales table and based on these values we can actually shift back in time and then compute the sales amount so let's see how we can do that so let's go back to the code and i'm going to introduce a final variable that will be var result and that will be basically a calculate function 
over the total sales measure and then what I am going to do is simply use the same period last year function just to check if that is working or not so let's confirm that and in the return part I am going to return the result variable so let's confirm and if I go back you can see that I am getting the values for the previous year but also for the other months as well and not just for the Octo August, September and October. So let's see how we can fix that. And the problem is that we are not actually using the create data lineage variable and simply relying on the same period last year. So it is basically shifting all the dates of all the cells in the previous year. So what we can do is force the sum same period last year to only shift the dates for the months that we have received in the create data lineage variable. And for that, what we can do is simply wrap that inside a calculate table variable function. And here I'm going to inject the create data lineage table in the filter context. And let's close that. And if I press enter, you can see that I get the sales amount for August 2007, September 2007 and October 2007 in the year 2008. And if I select May 2008, I am getting the values from the 2007. If I select something like November, I am getting the values in December 2008 for December 2007. And in January and February 2009, I am getting the sales amount of January and February 2008. So that was how you can actually create that calculation of shifting back in time, but also retrieving the values for the future months from the previous year. And that was all for this video and I will see you in the next one.